When Boston capitalists began building textile mills in Lowell, Massachusetts in the early 19th century, they recruited young women from rural New England as their labor force. They assumed they would be docile. Instead, the young women in the Lowell mills formed reading circles and organized to demand their rights. Here, Harriet Hansen Robinson, who started work in the mills when she was only 10, recounts a strike of the Lowell workers. At the time the Lowell cotton mills were started, the factory girl was the lowest among women. In England, and in France particularly, great injustice had been done to her real character. She was represented as subjected to influences that could not fail to destroy her purity and self-respect. In the eyes of her overseer, she was but a brute, slave, to be beaten, pinched, and pushed about. One of the first strikes of the cotton factory operatives that ever took place in this country was that in Lowell in October 1836, when it was announced that wages to, were to be cut down, great, great indignation was felt, and it was decided to strike en masse. This was done. The mills were shut down, and the girls went in procession from their several corporations to the Grove on Chapel Hill and listened to incendiary speeches from early labor reformers. One of the girls stood on a pump and gave vent to the feelings of her companions in a neat speech, declaring that it was their duty to resist all attempts at cutting down the wages. This was the first time a woman had spoken in public in Lowell. And the event caused such surprise and consternation among her audience. Cutting down the wages was not their only grievance, nor the only cause of this strike. Hitherto, the corporations had paid 25 cents a week towards the board of each operative, and now it was their purpose to have the girls pay the sum. And this, in addition to the cut in wages, would make a difference of at least $1 a week. It was estimated that as many as 12 or 1,500 girls turned out and walked in procession through the streets. My own recollection of this first strike is very vivid. I worked in a lower room where I had heard the proposed strike fully, if not vehemently discussed. I had been an ardent listener to what was said against the attempts at oppression on the part of the corporation, and naturally, I took sides with the strikers. When the day came on which the girls were to turn out, those in the upper rooms started first, and so many of them left that our mill was shut down at once. Then, when the girls in my room stood irresolute, uncertain what to do, asking each other, would you or shall we turn out, and not one of them having the courage to lead off, I who began to think they would not go out after all their talk, became impatient and started on ahead saying with childish bravado, I don't care what you do, I'm gonna turn out whether anyone else does or not. <laughs> and I marched out and was followed by the others. And as I look back on the long line that followed me, I was more proud than, than I have ever been at any success I may have achieved. Addie Bean, an 11-year-old in Denver, Colorado, sent this open letter to Donald Trump to the Colorado Independent after marching in local protests against the incoming president. There's a glass wall that divides men and women. It can be seen through wages, the government, and everyday scenarios. It is strong and everlasting and very part of everyday life. It is ridiculous. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> Women, in your eyes, are defined in terms of childbirth, appearance, weight, and most importantly, their husbands. A woman without a man is like a solar system without a sun. Nothing to hold her together nothing to steady her, and nothing to rotate around. To you, women are like flat objects, toys, dolls, too emotional and too indecisive, 
incapable of being anything other than a woman. A woman is a gas station used to fill a tank and then left empty. Something to walk on and touch and mold. You say it's okay to rape women and all the cruel, vain, hurtful things you, you say to them are okay because there's nothing they will do about it. People look up and listen to you. But can't you see? Happiness is beyond picture-perfect fantasies and lies and kisses and slaps and whispers. Happiness is something that we find within ourselves and something we carry inside. Not something we go looking for, but something we unleash. Women unleash fires that burn so bright, they ignite whole cities. <laughs> Women are so full, they overflow. So strong, they burst. So loud, they crack skies. <laughs> Women are a force of grit and fire and light and so much more. We will not back down. So, Donald Trump, when you are sexist and racist and immature and childish, remember this, we are strong. We can endure and retaliate and triumph. We can make a difference. We are uniting. Good luck trying to stamp out my fire. And most importantly, good luck trying to stop the change that's coming. Because no matter how many fits and tantrums you throw, and no matter how much money you spend, you are not going to stop us from shattering the world and the walls you build in it. Your attempts are only like oil to my fire, allowing it to spread and take form and burn. Sincerely, Addie Bean.